While tensional forces typically result just in thinning out or spreading of the Earth's crust, compressional forces can have a variety of outcomes. Compressional forces cause a buckling up of the land. While we have some layers buckling in an upward fashion and others in a downward fashion, both the ups and downs result from compression. You can't create a downward dip by pulling on a layer. You have to push it together. So here I have an up dip and a down dip just from compression. Here we have an example of a cross section of some strata that's been compressed. So we have some ups, we have downs. The down port points are referred to as synclines, while the ones that bend upward are referred to as anticlines. To determine whether or not something is an incline versus a, I mean a, san, a syncline versus an anticline has to do with where the surface is and which direction the limbs or edges that are bending upwards or downwards are going relative to the axial hinge. So if you were to draw a line down the middle and you were to give yourself some orientation of up versus down, here we have these limbs appear to be bending upward. In that situation where the limbs are bending upward, you have what's referred to as a syncline. So the syncline, I like to think of a syncline being like a sink because you have, if these were to be scooped out, you have these downward depressions. The opposite of a syncline, but still created with compressional forces, would be an anticline. So when you have the up and down noted, and you can tell with many block models which part's supposed to be up versus down, and you see along the axial hinge, these arms are then pointing down, and if this were to erode away, you get these mounds left behind, you see an anticline. And I mentioned mounds left behind if you were to erode the uppermost layers, if you were to just erode one layer at a time versus top down, because if you think of it as those little mounds or arches, and think the word anticline, and remember it looks like an anthill, that might help you to remember the two. So syncline is like a sink, anticline is like an anthill. And related to that, we have multi-directional compression that can, can that can cause, rather than just a single dip in one direction, dips on multiple sides. So you end up with something that's like a bowl, or like a, a rounded cap. When it's like a bowl, or it's like a syncline on all sides, it's referred to as a basin. And that's easy to remember if you know that the word basin is sometimes synonymous with the word sink. So a basin is when you have synclines in multiple directions, whilst a dome is when you have anticlines on multiple directions. And so this dome shape here also results from compression. There is another type of cline that we have. We have anticlines and synclines. We also have one that's called a monocline, where only one side is dipping down. This can result from originally horizontal layers depositing on top of a fault line. When that fault is displaced, either upward or downward, you have a deformation of the layers atop it. So we have the anticlines, synclines, monoclines, domes, and basins that you'll be recognizing, naming, and identifying the causing, causing forces of in this week's structural geology lesson.